Hi, I'm Alan Tubbs, and I'm a product manager for Bosch Rexroth. I want to take a few minutes to explain the Open Core interface and the benefits that the Open Core interface brings, along with some of the advantages to using it in your applications. The first thing we're going to talk about is this Open Core engineering diagram. And you'll see this diagram on a lot of our marketing materials and on our website. And what this diagram represents is a description of open core engineering as a whole. So if we look at the core of it, core of our business and the core of our products that we try to bring to our customers and the solutions we try to bring to them, we're talking about our motion control and our drive functions and product. So if we explode out one ring, we look at software tools and function toolkits, open standards, and the open core interface. And then the outer ring describes the life cycle of a machine. So we try to present and provide solutions in the design phase of a machine, in the implementation and commissioning of machines, solutions for production, and then even into the service of the machine. Now, the open core interface is probably what most people are interested in. It's the new component and what connects us to the outer world. And that's why it's drawn as sort of an arrow into our control and drive functions are the core functions. It connects the outside world to our controller. And there's a lot of benefits to being able to do this. One of them is just being able to connect our PLC automation to other things. When we talk about serving data up to supervisory systems or monitoring systems, you need an easy way to connect it, to get data to where it needs to be without a lot of effort. And the open core interface is designed to provide that access. Looking at these diagrams here, you can imagine if you're the red guy and you want to get a message to the blue guy about something like open core interface, you're going to have to send that message through multiple channels to get to the endpoint. And uh, you can think of open core interfaces like knowing many different languages and being able to talk to many different systems so that you can cut the communication channels down to just a direct communication without having to go through a bunch of intermediates. And this has a lot of benefits with just loss of data problems and translation errors. So how does it work? The open core interface is provided through an SDK and that's a software development kit. Basically what that is is a toolkit to help one system talk to another system. And this is familiar and with software developers, they're used to dealing with SDKs to bring other functionality into their development environment. One of the ways I try to explain it is if I'm developing a program in, say, Visual Studio, and I'm writing a C program to create an app or an executable or something, and I want to bring in the functionality of some hardware, say, like a camera, I don't want to have to write all the native code to establish the communications to the camera or develop code to move pictures back and forth. What I really want is a toolkit to make that a lot easier. And Open Core Interface is similar to that in that we're providing motion functionality to the customer without him having to know all the details of motion control and communication protocols. It's a library with over 500 different functions to perform motion commands and gather status information about our motion products. So the way it works is very similar to the way a PLC application works in the controller. If you're familiar with our motion control programming, you'll know that there's a codices 3S system on top of the motion control system. So the application engineer will write a PLC program in Interlogic and he'll use ladder logic or structured text or some other language to access commands in PLC libraries. And then those libraries talk to the firmware, which is more under the hood, so to speak, to actually create motion in the system. Open Core Interface works much the same way, it's just a different development environment. It's, say, using Visual Studio or Eclipse or LabVIEW, and it's using its own native development code, and it's using the libraries that are imported in the SDK, and it's accessing the commands in the underlying motion control firmware in much the same way as the PLC program would. So this is the feature that allows us to say that you don't need a PLC program to gain access to the motion control system. You can just use Open Core Interface. And it allows you to show demonstrations where the PLC is turned off and you can still create motion through a different program in a different development environment. 
The one thing that's helpful to do when we're talking about the open core interface is divide it into these four different categories. Then the top one's model-based engineering and rapid control prototyping, and this would include things like MATLAB and LabVIEW and the Open Modelica solution. Individual functions is a little more rare. This is more of the real-time application functions to where you'll be developing something with a separate microprocessor using VxWorks or another real-time operating system. The IT automation is probably the most familiar and this would include things like Microsoft Office applications or database applications. The supervisory type systems that would collect runtime data from the plant floor and do predictive maintenance and that sort of thing. And then smart devices are just phones and tablets. So when we look in the open core interface, there's a lot of different libraries that are available and you'll see a collection of some of them here. Again, segregated into the different categories. And what's important to notice here is these are the MLC and XLC libraries. To use these functions, you would need a hardware device like the MLC or XLC or XM controller in the loop to talk from this development environment to our actual controller. And this chart here just explains the different firmwares where libraries are available. So we already talked about XLC, MLC, Enderdrive. MTX has its own libraries, one of them being real-time, one of them not. And then Enderworks has its own libraries to automate some of its processes as well. And all this is available on the OpenCore engineering forums. So some of the customer benefits of the open core interface. One of the most obvious ones is it allows them to get around the PLC program. So if we think about a LabVIEW integrator that needs to get motion into a system for open core engineering, he would write an interface to our PLC. So there would need to be a communication channel like OPC UA or Ethernet IP or some kind of field bus to get data from the LabVIEW system to the Endrologic program to actually move motors and actuators and read data and that sort of thing. So if you can shorten the path to be able to get information and commands from one place to another, then you've created a better product for your customer. But what the Open Core interface allows the lab user to do now is to access those core firmware commands and data directly to where he doesn't need the PLC program in the middle to do that. So we've given him a tool set to move axes and read I.O., control I.O. directly from LabVIEW. And for the OEM, some of the benefits that he has is customization, identity, efficiency, and connectivity. So the customization part of it is just being able to make his machine unique in an easy way so he can add features like, you know, say, a tablet interface to do maintenance or control. He can add interfaces up to cloud networks to move data from his machine up to his customer's supervisory system easily. He can connect things like other controllers, like LabVIEW controllers, a lot faster than he was able to do before. And then from the efficiency standpoint, it just allows him to program a lot faster and a lot cleaner without a ton of integration effort to connect systems that don't talk to each other very well. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about the Open Core interface. For more information, you can go to our website at www.boschrexroth.com network. And there you can register with just an email registration and be able to get access to the SDK. There's also HTML help files to fully document the SDK and how to use it and how to start your own applications. And there's also sample files there that you can download to get an application started.